you might find it hard to believe, but the octet rule actually limits the number of possible generalized building blocks that we can see in Lewis structures to a very small number of possibilities. It's on the order of six or seven. In this video, I'd like to go through the process of building up the generalized building blocks from first principles. And while you won't be doing this process of building them up in the future, what you will be doing is looking at practical examples of Lewis structures and pulling out the generalized building blocks. And so seeing them all in advance can help you train your mind to recognize patterns before looking at a practical Lewis structure. At the end of this lesson, we'll go through a couple of practical examples and see how to pull these generalized building blocks out. So how do we go about building the generalized building blocks up from first principles? Well, keeping the octet rule in mind tells us that all of the building blocks that we generate need to have eight or fewer electrons around them. So that's a good place to start. So we can just begin with a central atom, X, and we can start drawing single bonds and lone pairs around that atom in order to generate building blocks. Now what I'm going to do is use a line to represent either a single bond or a lone pair. Remember that total electron count counts a single bond as two electrons, and so the count due to a lone pair and the count due to a single bond are the same. So in other words, we can start by, for example, drawing a building block that has four single bonds around it. This is the same as four lone pairs around that atom. Both of those guys have an electron count of eight, total electron count of eight. And I've drawn these wedges and dashes to show the bonds in three dimensions for reasons that will become clear later. But this is one of the simplest and most common generalized building blocks, a central atom with either four lone pairs, four single bonds, three lone pairs and one single bond, etc., around it. Now, what if we took one of these bonds and lone pairs and converted it from something independent into a double bond? Well, that gets us to another one of the most common building blocks, which is one that we've seen already, two single bonds and a double bond about the central atom. The total electron count is still eight, because all we did was we took one of either the lone pairs or single bonds from the first building block and converted it into a double bond. Let's do that process again. Let's take one of the single bonds in this second generalized building block and convert it into a double bond. That leads us to yet another important generalized building block with the central atom flanked by two double bonds. So we can actually take this now and think about introducing a triple bond. If we introduce a triple bond, we end up with either a single bond or a lone pair on the other side here, maintaining, again, the total electron count at eight. That's our guiding principle here. No matter how we lay down the bonds and lone pairs, the total electron count needs to remain eight. Believe it or not, these are all the possible eight electron generalized building blocks. A triple bond and a single bond, two double bonds, a double bond with two singles, and four singles. And of course, anywhere where you see a single bond, a lone pair could replace it since their total electron counts or their contributions to the total electron count are the same. It's two in both cases. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, we often see uh, building blocks that have fewer than eight electrons, and these are important points of reactivity. And so we'll talk about one of the most important and common of those building blocks, the six electron building block, which is just a central atom flanked by either three single bonds, two single bonds and a lone pair, one single bond and two lone pairs, etc. So this is a six electron building block, total electron count of six. These are all eight. And there's one last example to consider, and that is the actually extremely common but rarely drawn building block that possesses only two total electrons. And you may recall the so-called duet rule for hydrogen. This is where this building block becomes important. Just a single bond, which you also often see as hydrogen with a lone pair, as the hydride anion. So these are all the generalized building blocks that we'll use to think about the foundational 
building blocks of Lewis structures. Now, before ending this video, I want to talk about one more concept that's important for both the generalized and the particular building blocks, which we'll see in the next video. That's the idea of electron pair domains. And you may have heard this term already, but electron pair domains are, are useful primarily for thinking about molecular geometry. And when we talk about electron pair domains, we're talking about a region of space where electrons reside. Bonds that are, in some sense, dependent on one another belong to the same electron pair domain, dependent spatially. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at our old friend, the double with two singles building block. The double bond is treated as a single electron pair domain since both bonds occupy kind of the same region of space. That region of space in which the electrons of the double bond reside is called an electron pair domain, or EPD. Each of the single bonds also has its own electron pair domain, and so the building block as a whole has a total number of three EPDs. Like hybridization, the number of electron pair domains around an atom is directly related to molecular geometry. In this case, with three EPDs, we would expect a molecular geometry of trigonal planar for this building block, and that's observed in practice. And so electron pair domains are useful for thinking about geometry. Keep that idea in mind.